We can't blame you if you're not super familiar with Huawei's hardware. I mean, you can't really find much of it around here, and the US government definitely is not a fan either. The rest of the world that gets to use the company's phones are usually in for a treat when it's new Huawei flagship time, and, well, we're right about there right now. The company has just revealed its new Mate 20 and Mate 20 Pro smartphones, and they are easily among the most ambitious, exciting devices we've seen all year. And considering just how good 2018's phones have been so far, that's really saying something. Let's start with the Mate 20 Pro, because who doesn't love a little smartphone overkill? You might not be able to tell just how far overboard Huawei went at first glance, though. When you look at this thing head on, it just looks like, well, every other expensive phone we've tested this year. There's a 6.39 inch OLED display that covers almost all of the phone's face, and there's a wide, flat notch cut out of it. In fairness, this is a beautiful display, and it doesn't hurt that its tall 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio means the phone is actually really easy to hold onto. The May 20 Pro packs a surprise behind that screen, though. You can't see it, but there's a fingerprint scanner back there, and it works better than I expected it to. Chinese rival Vivo beat Huawei to market with an in-display fingerprint sensor in its premium Next phone earlier this year, and we already know OnePlus plans to use a similar sensor in its new OnePlus 6T. Really, the best thing I can say about this in-display sensor is that, during my limited hands-on time with it at least, it seemed to work just as well as any other fingerprint sensor I've used lately. I can't vouch for how well this thing works on a daily basis, but at least you've got some options. There's a 24 megapixel front-facing camera that, along with an infrared depth sensing array, you can use to face unlock your phone more securely, so you don't need to worry about someone with a picture of you walking up to your device and doing the same. Once you flip the phone over, you start to realize you're not working with your average flagship here. The Mate 20 Pro comes in a handful of really pretty colors, but by far the most impressive is a tweaked version of the bluish purplish twilight finish we first saw on the P20 Pro earlier this year. I mean, just look at this thing. Love them or hate them, Huawei clearly has an eye for striking design. And speaking of striking, I don't think anyone could miss these cameras. There are three of them and an LED flash squeezed into this strange square module, and honestly, it's kind of ugly. It is eye-catching though, and that's more or less exactly what Huawei was going for. Now, Huawei's approach to triple cameras has changed since we tested the P20 Pro earlier this year. That phone used a combination of RGB, monochrome, and telephoto sensors, plus a bunch of master AI features to churn out some really consistently nice photos. That AI stuff all still applies, and we'll actually get to that in a second, but the Mate 20 Pro uses a different set of cameras. There's a 40 megapixel standard sensor with an f1.8 aperture, an 8 megapixel telephoto camera with optical image stabilization, and a 20 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. That might sound a little familiar. LG used a similar approach with its new V40 ThinQ, but Huawei's cameras win out when it comes to pure resolution. We didn't get to play with these cameras for too long, but as far as I could tell, the resulting photos were on par with what we got out of the P20 Pro. That's not really a surprise, and it's not really a disappointment either. It didn't do everything perfectly, but the P20's triple camera system produced some excellent photos, and more than that, it was just fun to use. The Mate 20 Pro's cameras are better for macro photography now too, and Huawei's machine learning tricks are back in full force. This thing was great at keeping focus locked on a moving subject, and a new AI cinema mode meant I could turn just about everything in front of me into a mostly black and white scene from Sin City in real time. Was it perfect? No. Granted, we were working with some non-final software, so that was to be expected, but here's hoping that feature gets a little more polished before launch. Of course, all of those tricks are only possible because of Huawei's machine learning prowess, and this year's Kirin 980 chipset is capable of a lot of heavy lifting. Most importantly, a new dual neural processing unit just might be the star of the show here. There's one NPU for tasks like image recognition, which are fairly mechanical and tedious, and another NPU for more complex tasks like natural language processing. Now, it's obviously way too early to tell what kind of impact chipsets like these might have on the way we interact with our favorite apps and services, but Huawei clearly gets the value of mobile machine learning, and we'll just kind of have to wait and see how this all shakes out. On a more fundamental level, though, the Mate 20 Pro is just fast. 
That was one of my biggest beefs with the older P20 Pro. It ran well enough, but rival devices with Snapdragon 845s were much less prone to the sometimes jerky performance the P20's Kirin 970 chipset showed off. The difference wasn't exactly night and day, but sometimes it felt like it was pretty close. It doesn't hurt that Huawei has pretty dramatically cleaned up its interface either. It used to be totally overwrought, but the EMUI is getting a lot cleaner and a lot better real fast. And now we've come to what might be the Mate 20 Pro's single best feature. This phone doesn't just support wireless charging, it supports wireless charging. As in, you can press the Mate 20 Pro up against another Qi compatible device and use it as a wireless power bank. It takes a little while to kick in and you have to have enabled the feature in the Mate 20 Pro settings, but using it to charge an iPhone that I had that was dying is honestly one of the coolest things I've seen a smartphone do in a long time. It's been a while since I've been so thoroughly charmed by a kooky, well-executed idea in a smartphone. So to Huawei, I say, well done. So yeah, the Mate 20 Pro, sort of like the P20 Pro before it, is ambitious and absurd in the best way. The standard Mate 20 still has a lot going for it, but let's face it, it's definitely the more pedestrian of Huawei's new phones. It looks very similar to the Pro, obviously, but there are a few key differences to point out. It has, for example, a slightly bigger 6.53 inch LCD running at Full HD+, and the notch cut out of it is much smaller. Since there's no fancy in-display fingerprint sensor here either, there's a more standard fingerprint sensor around the back, and there's a smaller battery inside too. Think 4,000 milliamp hours compared to the Pro's 4200. I really don't mean to gloss over the regular Mate 20. It's a perfectly nice phone, and it takes a lot of what makes the Mate 20 Pro so interesting and makes it accessible to more people. That said, the Mate 20 is just a little boring by comparison. It's almost unavoidable. Ultimately, there's still a lot more we need to learn about these two phones, and for once, I am surprisingly thoroughly excited by what a smartphone maker has brought to the table. These phones are, after all, almost refreshingly weird. And at this point in the year, when smartphone makers have more or less all made their visions clear, weird is a very nice change of pace.